Did you know that most printers allow you to change the filament during printing? It's a great feature and opens up all kinds of possibilities. For example, you could make something like this, or even something better like this, or eyes on these two guys. It's a great feature and works with most printers. The basic idea is that you can print different layers with different colors on top of each other. This means that whatever you want to print must be suitable for dividing into various layers. Clipboards are usually the best option, as they contain bold shapes and only a few colors. Conversely, photographs are almost impossible to work with, as they can contain hundreds of different shapes and colors. Once you have your art ready, it's time to convert it into a vector image. Vector image is basically an outline that you can then use to create a 3D model from. Let's start with an easy example, a YouTube logo which has a simple design and only three colors. You can use Inkscape for conversion. It's a free, open source software that can run on most PCs. Once you have it up and running, simply import the file or just drag it in. Accept the default settings and the image should appear in your workspace. Next, go to the path menu and pick Trace Bitmap. Before you continue, enable the Live Preview option, as it's a lot easier to trick the settings that way. I then recommend selecting the Colors option under the Multiple Scans section. Finally, adjust the number of scans. Typically, you want as many scans as there are different colors in the scene. This can of course change from case to case, so play with the settings and keep an eye on the preview. The actual colors are not really important. Your goal is to get as few shapes as possible while still retaining all of the features. Once you are satisfied with the preview, hit OK and check the results. The newly created image is actually on top, so move it away and delete the old one. If everything looks OK, Save it as a new file with SVG extension. If not, go back and tweak the settings some more. Next, we'll import the file to a modeling software so that we can actually create our 3D object. I recommend using Fusion 360, but just about any modeling software can import SVG files, including Tinkercad. In Fusion, we have to create a new component first. Then, it's simply a matter of going to the Insert menu and selecting SVG. You should now see the outline imported as a new sketch. Then, decide how you want to divide the layers and in what order. The order is actually very important, because the top layers will cover the bottom ones. You should also consider the number of layers that you want to use. I found that having at least two layers is enough to prevent the bottom one from affecting the top color. You can also take advantage of this by creating different shades by placing darker colors underneath. Let's go back to our YouTube logo and think about how it's going to be printed. We want to print the background color first because everything else will come on top. Extrude the rectangle to form the first layer of our sign. I will print this at 0.2 layer height, and I'd like to use 2 layers per color. That means that the first layer should be 0.4mm in height. Let's continue with the black part. Since we already have a 0.4 layer, and we also want the second color to be 0.4 in height, we have to extrude it for a combined height of 0.8. Hide the body so that you can see the sketch again and extrude all three layers together. Finally, extrude the remaining two shapes. They will both be the same color so you can extrude them together. As before, we already have 0.8 of height and we want to add another color which brings us to a total of 1.2mm for the new extrusion. 
hide the sketches and enable bodies again to see how the final model looks like. If we go back in the perspective, you can see how the layers are now stacked together. We are all done with Fusion, so right click on the component and save it as STL file. Use your favorite slicer, but make sure to pick the same layer height that you've used in Fusion, which in this case was 0.2mm. Now comes the most important step. We have to modify the G-code so the printer will know when to stop and switch filament. Luckily for us, Prusha has already created an app to do just that. It's called ColorPrint and you can either download it or use their online version. Here's the best part, this works for the majority of printers, not just with the Prusha. I've done a bit of research and this should work with Ultimaker, Creality, Van Hal, Monoprice and Delta, to name just a few. Using color print is actually very easy. Upload your model in the browser or load it in the app. Then just add the height where the color should change. If you remember, our first color had two layers and thus a combined height of 0.4. That means that we want to change the color at the first layer that comes right after that, which is at 0.6mm. The black filament goes up to 08 so we want to switch to red just after that, which is at exactly 1mm. Then simply save the changes and the G-code is ready to be printed. When it's time to change the filament, the printer will move the head away, unload the filament and start yelling at you. Try to switch the filament as quickly as you can. Leaving the hot head empty for too long can cause it to jam. Most signs come out looking great and it's really easy to do once you try making a couple of them. Even if you want to print shapes that are more complex, the process is basically still the same. The only difference is that you have to be extra careful when creating layers. Here's a little trick to help you out. You can actually assign different colors to objects in Fusion 360. Right click anywhere and open up the appearances tool. Right click again on the existing material and create a duplicate. By double clicking on it, you can now select any color you wish. Then simply drag it to the shape you want. You can now stack colored layers on top of each other to see how they'll look like when printed. Be sure and give it a try, it's really easy and looks great. Besides, holidays are just around the corner and you can now make unique gifts. I really can't wait to see what you'll come up with. Until next time, as always, thank you for watching and happy printing!